Hello folks, Jason Cressman here, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. Hey, guess what I seen just a few days ago? We went about eight miles south to pick up a pizza the other day, a Hawaiian pizza at that. And I know a lot of you don't believe pineapple belongs on a pizza, but trust me, it does. Anyway, while we were there going through the drive through to pick up the pizza, I looked out the window and I seen some purple dead nettles growing in their driveway. And that makes me think that since they're south of us, about eight miles, that in the next week or so, I should see purple dead nettles growing here around the bee yard. So I'm pretty excited to see that. That'll give us uh, another source of pollen and a little bit of nectar. So that's that's good to have for the bees. Um, this week I got an order in from Man Lake and I'm not extremely happy with how it was shipped. Check this out. So I got my Man Lake order today and I'm going to be honest with you, I removed this paper and I've looked down in this box once already. I'm not super impressed by the way everything was packaged. Right here we got 10 pounds of buckwheat seed. Nothing wrong with the way they packaged that. It's in a feed bag, it's sealed, and it's within the cardboard box. It's what's underneath of that that I'm not very happy about. What these are that you're looking at here are the Man Lake waxed cardboard nukes and I'll use these for the nukes that I sell in the next few months so I really rely on these to be in good working order and not to have any breaks cracks or anything of that sort I don't want the bees escaping why these are in the customers vehicle heading back to the new home what we got here is uh, a few of the caps that plug the entrance on these nukes I already had some left from last year so I only needed five for this year but usually the way these are packaged is they come flat just like so and they're all banded together what we have here are the lids here we've got my new bellow look at that looks like it's seen much better days here we've got more lids and looking at them here real quick, I don't see any that anything's really cracked or damaged. Um, that's with the lids though. Down in here is the full hive body. I don't know how they managed to get them in there that way, but it's definitely not what I'm used to. Um, up on inspection here of the first one, I don't really see anything that is damaged. But yeah, folks, usually this whole flat piece of cardboard, they would come stacked together just like that, nice and flat, and they'd be banded together. And I realize it's probably not the easiest to ship that way, but getting them this way is definitely different than I am used to. I don't know. I'll keep you posted if I notice anything wrong with them, that's for sure. Um, I've definitely fallen back on Man Lake for the last, I'm going to say, six, seven years for these boxes. And if this is the way they're going to ship them, as long as there isn't a problem, we'll be good. But if I start to notice problems, like there's a piece of cardboard that's tore. It doesn't seem to go all the way through, so... If I notice any problems, there will be issues, and I will have to uh, start looking outside of these boxes. And I know everybody says, try out the Jester boxes, but when you figure in the price of the Jester box, plus the shipping, it doesn't equal what I can get here with free shipping. So, it's hard to beat the free shipping. Anyway, just wanted to share that with you. Um, I thought it was real interesting how uh, they came this time. So... You see my concerns there? I, I'm just curious how many of you have ever ordered these wax coated cardboard nukes from Man Lake and have received them the way I did this time. Um, like I said, in the past years they've came all flat and banded together and they're not in a box. The UPS driver carries them all strapped together, sets them on my deck and and that's how it usually is but this time he gives me the one box and I'm like uh you got any more on your truck for me nope that's it so I don't know I, 
at the first look I was a little uh, aggravated by the mess in the box but after going through it with you all on the camera there I don't really see anything that's damaged so maybe it'll be fine maybe maybe Man Lake did find a way to uh, shave a little bit of cost off on shipping by packing it all in a box and if that's the case good for them um, and I will update once I start to assemble those boxes but um, you know a couple months from needing them so I don't really want to have to find a place to store all of them nukes right now so it's gonna be a little while before I assemble them but I will keep you all posted on what I find out when that time comes so what I'd like to do with you today now that I've got my new rubber bellow, is I want to assemble it and show you how that goes together and discuss why I like this rubber bellow over a leather bellow. Um, a lot of people do swear by the leather bellows and I understand why the durability on a leather bellow is way superior to this rubber bellow. I get about two seasons out of one of these and then usually the top starts to crack and then it eventually rips. And I'll tell you from experience, um, when you use formic acid or mighty way quick strips and you got gloves on and you've touched the strip, don't touch this rubber. It will eat a hole through it. I know that from experience. So when you use the mighty way quick strips, make sure you remove your glove before you touch your smoker or wipe the uh, formic acid off of your glove before squeezing it to get some smoke. So the way this works, you can see these little tabs going all the way around the bellow. And they're on both sides. As you can see, there's some on here and there's some on here. And they go all the way around. On the inside of the bellow, you've got this rubber flap right here. This is where the air sucks into the bellow. And then when you squeeze it, it's forced out this into your smoker. So this is your intake. When I take this apart to put the new rubber on, I always take a tooth, old toothbrush and clean around this. That way it's got a good seal and sits flat against the plastic. Here in this circle, there's one on both sides, in between there goes your spring. And you have to hold it in place, like so. And then, you lay on the rubber. And you got to keep this pinched together until you get this on because if that spring comes out of place this is uh something you'll be doing again <laughs> so you can see there's little cuts in this rubber for those little teeth to come up through there i got one up through got two of them up through so we'll cross over here now and we'll do the other side I'm going to explain to you after I get this together why I prefer this bellow over a leather one. And I want to challenge um, some of you to go out and try this bellow. See what you think. Okay, so now we'll work our way down around the side. And remember, you got to keep this hand on it and keep it squeezed together or that spring will fall out of place so it's it's a little bit tedious but it's not super super hard by any means ladybug could probably do it really if i if i wanted her to but she's sleeping and i don't really want to wake her up so i'll finish it super excited to have this i actually think if we back up to last fall when I did my uh, sumac treatment, um, I actually think this played a tool on it because I was using a leather bellow because this one had ripped at the time. And it, the smoker actually itself had a leather bellow on it. It was a totally different smoker than what this one goes on. And for some reason, it just wasn't pushing the smoke out that this one does. And that's one of the reasons I like this bellow. So you can see it's now fully assembled. See that? You got my screws here to screw it back on to the smoker. So here's why I like this. The tension when you squeeze this is very, very minimal. Now, if you have a leather one with a real stiff spring in it, it takes a lot to work that and if you do that hundreds of times during the day 
it's eventually going to get to your wrist. Your hand's going to get sore from squeezing it. Um, that's why I like it. Maybe I'm a wimp. I don't know. It's really easy to squeeze, and I really like that. So that's why I like the rubber bellow, and I'm glad to have another one for the next couple of years before I had to replace it. Do you know what that is? That's the bees removing some larva that was abandoned during the cold snap. Looks all nasty. It's probably been abandoned for a day or so at this point. And you can see it's chilled and died. For some reason, though, they're dragging it back in now instead of dragging it out. Anyway, let's talk about the bees a little bit. Um, we had some warmer weather this week. I didn't really get much of a chance to uh, do anything with the bees, nor is there much to do at this time. It's still, uh, well, we're getting cold again now, but we've had some warm days this week, and, and there's not really much I can do for the bees at this time. There's, there's still cold weather. Like I say, it's cold out there again now, and uh, I don't really want to start breaking boxes apart just yet. So we've got a few more weeks. I'll start breaking the boxes apart and uh, see what the girls are doing. Um, here, hopefully by next week, um, I wanna get the Apame Hive um, set up in a location and start getting that prepared to install bees in once the weather permits. Okay, so now let's take a couple minutes and talk about Perosima. And that's nothing to do with beekeeping. It's actually part of, it's kind of an after effect of COVID-19. So if you've had COVID-19, you might wanna pay attention to this. Perosima. What is it? I'm going to tell you. I noticed it about three or four weeks ago. But first, let me back up a little bit. I got COVID-19 the day after Thanksgiving of 2021. And I really experienced uh, COVID until about ooh, the end of December. And during that time, I lost all sense of smell, taste. I was very tired, very congested. And, uh, yeah, I was dealing with COVID. It was awful. Um, and then, I'm going to guess by about mid to late January, I started to get some of my taste and smell back. By middle of February, I had acquired it all back. Everything was perfect. Life was peachy. I was starting to get my energy back. Um, some of the congestion in my chest was starting to leave. And then, about the first week of March, wham! Perosima hit me. So what is Perosima? Well first let me tell you I haven't been diagnosed but I've done my research and I am 100% confident that I have Perosima. The problem is there's not a whole lot you can do for it but sit around and wait for it to run its course. Um, there is some injections and different things that people say help but for the most part you sit around and wait. So what does Perosima do? Um, Perosima affects your ability to smell and taste. Um, not necessarily you can't smell and taste, it's everything that you smell and taste smells rank, dead, or smoky. Yeah, it's not real pleasant. Um, I noticed this the first week of March. Um, first let me tell you, it's my job during the evenings or during the week to have dinner ready. So, you know, I'm cooking things like uh, tacos, spaghetti, uh, chicken fajitas, um, lots of different things. They usually contain uh, beef, which many of you know, I am a grass-fed beef farmer and we just got a bunch of ground beef back. And I know it's good, it's from my own cow. Um, very, very good stuff, but the problem is, is it doesn't taste good to me because of this perosima. Now the wife, she'll sit and mow down one of them burgers me I'm like real skeptical about each bite because of the rank flavoring what perosima does is it affects the receptors the nerve receptors in your nose and it takes the taste of say burger and makes it smoky ranky tasting so it's not real pleasant and it's the same for me right now with chicken now I've done a little bit of research this week and actually joined a perosima Facebook group where there are many, many people dealing with this. Um, some people have dealt with it for over a year. 
and I'm seeing all different kinds of ways to deal with it and one of the most popular ways to deal with it is to get one of them swimmer clips that go on your nose and you put that on when you eat I know it sounds weird you got taste buds on your tongue but I'm telling you those taste buds aren't where you taste for some reason it has to do with your nose um, and I don't understand that but if I pinch my nose while I'm eating a burger that taste isn't there if I pinch my nose while I'm eating a chicken fajita that taste isn't there but if I leave my nose unpinched and just breathe normal while I'm eating it it tastes ranky smoky awful it doesn't taste good at all so it's like your receptors are confused to different scents now sitting here right now the air smells fine my clothes they smell wonderful but I'm reading on Facebook that as time goes by different things could lose their scent and start to smell awful and I'm not really looking forward to that I'm seeing where people are losing weight just because all the food that they normally eat now smells rank and smoky flavored um, I've seen cases where um, the person's better after five six months so I'm hoping that is the case for me but perosoma take a few minutes look it up if you have dealt with this or had any of these symptoms I would love to hear what you've done or how you've been dealing with this issue um, it's nothing real fun to deal with I've actually um, watched a couple of videos here on YouTube where some people you know they put this nose clip on and they eat and before they can take the nose clip off they have to go to the bathroom brush their teeth five or six times and then uh, gargle some mouthwash three or four times before they can take the clip off because what they ate um, they're still going to taste if they don't go brush their teeth and wash out with some mouthwash before they remove the clip now it's not that way for me but right now I'll tell you these lifesavers have been a godsend and I don't know if that's what's keeping the taste low in my mouth matter of fact I'm gonna have one now but they have been a huge help and the same with hauls I don't really want to eat hauls like candy but when it comes to tasting this off flavor in your mouth all the time or smelling an off flavor um, yeah, I'm gonna have a hauls I'm not gonna deal with that smell so anyway folks that's what little bit I know about the perosoma at this point um, I'm hoping it runs its course really really quick I've been uh, drinking a little bit more hot tea and adding honey to it hopefully that will do something to uh, make this go away but uh, I've actually read a post this morning where the person a person went to the doctor and told them what was going on and the doctor told them to check the dates on their food it's not the dates on the food it's not that we're actually eating spoiled food it's that our receptors and our nose are putting uh, off smell with what we eat it's they're just confused I don't really know any other way to explain it to you it's just weird folks but weird I guess that's why it came to me <laughs> so anyway I just wanted to share a few uh, highlights from the week with you and fill you in on what I'm dealing with with the perosoma um, it's rather interesting it's not really the greatest experience but it is interesting so if you have any questions or comments about anything I said in this video or if you've dealt or know somebody dealing with perosoma leave a comment below I'd love to know how um, they're dealing with it and what they're doing um, I will say I did order me a swimmers clip um, last night and it'll be here today so you see me sitting around a table with a nose clip on when I was eating don't ask any questions oh I've actually even watched a video where the guy has to put this nose clip on before he can go through the drive-thru because if you smell the food before you put the clip on you're going to associate that bad smell with it as you eat it while you've got the clip on so it messes a lot with your head um, and it makes eating very very tricky so anyway it's a whole big thing about perosoma. Oh, just when you think you're done with COVID, it comes and slaps you in the face again. Anyway, folks, hope you have a great week, and I hope you never have to deal with perosoma. 
Uh, if you enjoyed this video, throw me a big thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. Comments below. Thanks again. Have a great week, folks.